Welcome back to another Foxy Games UK news video. Well, yeah, big news today. PS5 Pro was officially revealed yesterday and PlayStation lead architect for PS4, PS4 Pro and PS5 and now, well, PS5 Pro was at the helm briefly detailing the key features of the PS5 Pro, which I'm sure will look impressive, though the compression heavy app that is YouTube did not serve Sony's demonstration well, and you'll see that. And then there was the price, and boy, was that a thing. But I'll give you my thoughts on that as we progress through this video. So I guess we should start at PS5 Pro's capabilities. And by the way, if you like this sort of thing, hit like, subscribe, and notification. So PS5 Pro, two terabyte SSD, which kind of matches the Xbox uh, Special Edition, which is going for around 600 bucks. That comes with two terabytes, but no extra uh, GPU power or anything. So the GPU of the PS5 Pro has 67% compute units compared to the standard PS5. That's 28% faster memory, 45% faster rendering, advanced ray tracing, dynamic light reflection and refraction technologies, raised cast at around times two to three speeds of the original PS5, AI driven upscaling, machine learning indeed, PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution or DLSS for beginners, which offers a sharp, super sharp image clarity and detail alongside game boosts, which will obviously just give a little slight uplift to those frames per second, particularly with those uh, sub 60 FPS games. Apparently 8,500 PS4 games can be enhanced system level, meaning they don't have to go to a developer for patches. The price, well, yeah, we'll get onto that, but it's compatible with separate disk drives, meaning this thing launches as digital only, which is kind of strange for a pro model. And yeah, they didn't even throw in a stand, which is sold separately. PS5 Pro launches November 7th, 2024, with pre-orders going up on September 26th for a princely sum of 699 US dollars which equates to the same in UK, it's 700 pounds. They didn't give a damn about the uh, pound and the dollar straight up. So we're paying more. It's actually 800 euros for the rest of Europe, which is mind bogglingly insane for a console. So here's my theory. Sony probably stuck an extra 100 bucks on each PS5 Pro and five dollars extra on controllers and a price hike in japan in order to recuperate the rumored 200 million dollar loss it took on hero shooter game failure concord or it could be sony is testing consumers with its ps5 pro pricing in order to gauge the absolute max they can charge us for a playstation 6 in four years or so or it could be Sony see the complete and utter backboneless, let's throw in the towel kind of corporation, total lack of any discernible competition to PlayStation from Xbox, perhaps making this easier to pull off for Sony, no competition from Xbox in the hardware space. Sony has realized it rules with total dominance in the higher end console space, and as was in the heady, somewhat misguided early days leading up to the launch of the PS3, another overpriced BMOF has decided now it's time to become utterly complacent and screw over every existing PS4 and PS5 user whose library mainly consists of majority box games. To so go ahead and upgrade to the PS5 Pro, nickel and diming them for an extra 80 bucks for an attachable disc drive. Let that sink in. Sony is absolutely diabolical for this. Sending out a clear message. We want to charge you an outrageous amount of money for a mid-gen upgrade. Not even next-gen, mid-gen upgrade with barely any uptick in CPU performances. Literally the same, what, 10%? What's that? 54 to 57 frames per second? They want to charge an outrageous, ludicrous, exorbitant amount of money for this mid-gen upgrade. And then they want to do away with physical media for the PS6 release. Otherwise, they would have offered even at a high, slightly higher price. Or well, take a hit, man. You're making money. Come on now, Sony. 
offer one with a bundle with a drive so it takes it that would have cleared this perception of where you're going with this which is clearly digital future is it just me can we all see the reason why most people are pissed at sony right now it's not even about the $700 for some people. It's the fact that it's a so-called professional version of PS5 without a disk drive. Literally less features than the slim PS5 disk version that is approximately $300 to $350 bucks cheaper than PS5 Pro. And you can play all your existing physical games, no additional purchase required. Naturally, as a channel, I'll be likely picking up this overpriced thing so you won't have to. Because I want to test the games, compare them to regular PS5s, let you know of any tangible frame rate increases or upticks. You know, test the console, that type of thing. But I have to tell you, in all honesty, I do this begrudgingly. Because had I not had a YouTube channel, news, hardware, software, I don't think I'd be picking this thing up. I just, I'm a bit, it sits uneasy with me that what they're charging for this thing. So I won't tell you how to spend your money, but I cannot recommend the PS5 Pro to existing PS4 or PS5 users who have a sizable physical library. In fact, the PS5 Pro is an insult to every gamer who prefers box physical disc games. Now this might be appealing to somebody who you know, is already digital on PS4 or digital on PS5. They want the extra power. They don't have to buy this disk drive because they don't really care about physical box games. Well, yeah, you would have to decide if this is of value to you. I've always said the thing is only worth what it is if it's worth it to you. That's where the value is. Individual value. What, what I value, you may not value. Simple as that. And when you consider the price, I wonder if Phil Spencer decided against a mid-gen Xbox Series X console because he wasn't confident he could deliver a worthwhile upgrade for less than $600. And perhaps Spencer was right when he said, and I quote, the data doesn't show there's a demand for another next-gen upgrade. In fact, Xbox Series S is considered the standard console and Xbox Series X is the upgrade. Microsoft apparently gave gamers a mid-gen upgrade four years earlier than Sony when it launched Series X alongside the Series S model. These are peculiar times. Is the sub 400, 500 console era over? Stand off in the comments. Also, you consider that PS5 Pro is $100 more than the special edition 2TB Xbox Series X. Then, you know, you might not think it's much of a bitter pill to swallow. However, not everybody thinks the price of these consoles are going to deter gamers from upgrading. If we go over to AmpereAnalysis.com, well, PS5 Pro Sony pulls its pro strategy lever to engage PlayStation enthusiasts. Sony has confirmed the long-rumored PlayStation 5 Pro will launch globally on November 7 at a price point of $699 US dollars or 800 euros across Europe and $699.99 in the UK and 120,000 yen in Japan. This represents a 40% premium on the current disc-based model in the US, 46% premium on the UK price and 45% premium on the European and a 50% premium on the newly announced Japanese price. The pricing of the existing PS5 models will remain the same following the launch of the new model. So it boils down to Sony can't bring the price of the standard PS5 down, hence why PS5 Pro may have its inflated price. Maybe it really does cost a lot of money to produce. Who knows at this point? We'll have to find out more as the tech analysis and digital foundry videos start popping up. But shockingly, PS5 Pro will come without a disk drive, but is compatible with the currently available drive, which can be purchased separately. But it will include a 2TB SSD, double the 1TB in the current PS5 model, or the PS5 Pro CPU largely remains the same as the current model. The GPU has been upgraded to include more compute power to improve rendering speed. PS5 Pro will be marketed as the most powerful console available. Well then, 
The new GPU also includes more advanced ray tracing and AI-enhanced upscaling to increase frame rates for supported games. PlayStation has named this technology PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution and is based on AMD's own Fidelity FX Super Resolution, so aims to deliver more games at 4K with 60fps using this technology. PS5 Pro also provides support for Wi-Fi 7, a new standard which supports higher throughput for much better wireless connectivity. Sony says it's uh, presently tracking around 50 titles that will carry PS5 Pro enhanced label and will take advantage of its new GPU capabilities. Those games include Sony's own releases and third-party games such as Alan Wake 2, Assassin's Creed Shadows, Dragon's Dogma 2, much needed, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, especially in the graphics department. In addition, PS5 Pro will run an enhanced version of Game Boost for a catalogue of PS4 and PS5 releases, with games potentially running more stably with better image quality. The physical size of the PS5 Pro is a mixture of the original PS5 and the latest slim model. The height is around the same as the original launch uh, model and the width is the same as the latest model. The PS5 Pro will be compatible with official interchangeable covers that are available to existing PS5 Slim owners. Though in spite of the $700 price tag, Ampere forecasts that around 1.3 million PS5 Pro consoles will be purchased by consumers in the 2024 launch window. This is compared to 1.7 million PS4 Pros that were sold at the launch in 2016. And they expect the price point to soften demand with some consumers, but for PlayStation enthusiasts, the pricing is less of a consideration. Now, according to Ampere data over its life, PS4 Pro sold around 14.5 million units, around 12% of total PS4 sales, so they're expecting a similar dynamic for the PS5 Pro, with the expectation that it will sell through around 13 million units by 2029. And if we head over to VideoGamesChronicle.com or VGC, system lead Mark Cerny detailed some of the specific upgrades that will come to the at PS5 Pro, including examples like Horizon Forbidden West, now runs at 4K at 60 FPS. The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered will target a super smooth 60 FPS per second, it will double the power of PlayStation 5 Pro in titles like The Last of Us and Ratchet and Clank and Marvel Spider Man 2 will have an improved level of detail at 60 FPS. Horizon Forbidden West will also have improvements to lighting and visual effects, as well as hair and skin in cinematics. And Gran Turismo 7 will now feature ray trace reflections between cars during gameplay while continuing to sport its targeted 60 frames per second mode. According to CNET, Sony showed off Gran Turismo running at 8K on an 80 inch screen. It's unclear if that will be supported when the PS5 Pro version ships unlikely. Now Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth is another title that will take advantage of the new PS5 Pro system and the game will have increased level of detail and fidelity while maintaining 60 FPS. Games that aren't officially supported by PS5 Pro via patches will still receive upgrades via PS5 Pro Game Boost which can apply to more than 8,500 back and pack games PS4 games playable on PS5 Pro. This feature may stabilize or improve the performance of supported PS4, PS4 Pro and PS5 games. Enhanced image quality for PS4 games is also available to improve the resolution on select PS4 titles. Interesting stuff. And you know, at the end of the day, it'll be lovely to see these games upscaled and running super smooth, great anti-lasing and everything else. But uh, there you have it. That's PS5 Pro in a nutshell. A lot of discourse over the uh, PS5 Pro at the moment, but it does have AI upscaling game boost. It can improve over 8,000 games. That's a hell of a lot of games. This is all done via machine learning, hardware level. So in effect, I'm looking for this to be much better than what we're getting with AMD at the moment with their, uh, you know, rather fuzzy looking upscaler that they have. Um, FSR 2, 3, what have you. I'm hoping this is like better than checkerboarding on PS4 Pro, but also approaching DLSS level, that would be quite appeasing. And make the 700 a bit of an easier pill to swallow, even though, ah, very expensive. But yeah, 
this is really approaching PC pricing people and you know you can build a PC for around twelve hundred dollars I know that's like five hundred more than the seven hundred dollars we got remember PC does a lot more but then some people are just not comfortable with PC and will always love consoles as I do I always love consoles but I just can't help feel a bit bummed out by the fact that it doesn't come with a disk drive and it had the goal to charge 700 for this console. I'm sure it's gonna look fantastic, but anyway, we'll have to wait and see. I'm gonna put my pre-order in. I'm gonna dive in on this and I'll come up with a video sometime in the future, let you know my findings. And you'll have Digital Foundry doing their in-depth stuff as well, which I'm not competing with. But to, yeah, I'll just give you my opinions, just having it in front of me on an OLED TV 4K, we'll see how it all pans out. But if you like this sort of thing, because that there is the end of the video, hit like, subscribe, notification, and uh, I'll see you soon. Remember, play games, not corporations.